guest with us this morning. Uh, and this guest is coming with us through um, whatever social media process we're using here. Uh, but his name is Rob Watt. Uh, Rob Watt, let me turn this on here. Rob Watt is one of our, what we would say, one of our more recently supported missionaries. I think we've been supporting him for about two years. Let's go with that, about two years. And uh, he's never actually been here to speak with all of you. So this is his first opportunity to do that. So Rob, welcome. We're glad you're here with us. Well, it is great to be here. Um, I'm not okay. sure. We're hearing how, you how back in the, the back, language. but we're not hearing you through the speaker. So give it a second here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep talking. Okay. Rob, where are you calling us from? So I'm calling you from uh, the edge of Sugarland, Texas, which is uh, just south of Houston. All right, from Houston. Rob is part of a ministry called Mars Hill Productions. And uh, Rob, since nobody's had a, really had a good chance to meet you, most people, I should say, uh, tell us a little bit about any kind of connection you have to this area. Give us a little bit of your testimony, uh, a little bit of your background to catch us up. Okay, I, I moved into your neighborhood uh, 1974, uh, next door neighbors to Pick Reichert, <clears throat> and um, you know my life has uh, never been this, the same since. Um, so I grew up basically uh, up up there north of uh, um, Bali, and um, you know my my spiritual life um, has a, a wonderful. Um, uh, a wonderful point of intersection with y'all, um, and you notice I'll say y'all because um, I'm, I live in Texas now. <laughs> but um, so I, I first heard the gospel, um, and I first saw the gospel demonstrated um, at the youth center. You know, back in the 70s, um, the mid 70s. So th this was 1976. Um, there was a gentleman who um, who recognized that that was a great portal a great opportunity to engage young people um, with the gospel, and he just started hanging out. His name was Brian, and um, between him, um, because he had, a, he had a joy that was just radiant, and, um, uh, and the conversations I had with, uh, with one of my best friends, uh, Chris Eshelman, um, I was able to understand the gospel right before I turned 16, but the context of that was, was at the youth center. So that's very uh, uh, near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> Fantastic. And when, and when Rob says youth center, uh, that's definitely what they talked about in the, in the 70s when he was there. And that would be the Valley Community Center uh, that right. we're still part of that uh, vibrant ministry. And be praying for that because last year, you know, numbers were down because of COVID. But we want to have this kind of impact in our community where young people hear and see the gospel lived out. Amen? That's right. All right, so uh, Rob, tell us a little bit about uh, your life into ministry, and then uh, bring us up to, to date on Mars Hill Productions. Like, what's their mission, and how did you become part of them? Sure. So, uh, you know, Mars Hill um, started way back in 1977, and for about 20 years, they did um, uh, films that were primarily for America's youth. And I can remember as a youth pastor... Um, out at uh, Mountain View Chapel, and even I, I was the director for, I was a co-director at, uh, at the community center for a year, um, and I remember showing films that were produced by Mars Hill, and I would drive down to Souderton. Um, I think it's, it was gospel films back then, um, but they would rent out gospel films, and I can remember they were super expensive, and you had to get them back the next day by 2 o'clock or whatever. It's crazy, <laughs> but... Um, we used to show these, these, these films, and that was the foundation of Mars Hill because, um, and it still holds true today, that we, we want to use uh, media, uh, you know, to reach um, the lost and the least with the gospel. And whether that's uh, with movies, whether that's with Christmas cards, if that's what the Lord leads us into, um, just using media. Um, and, you know, so for the first 20 years, it was geared for reaching the youth of America, and then the, the Lord just did a work in, um, in, our, in Fred Carpenter's heart. Fred Carpenter is the, uh, uh, the co-founder and the current president of Mars Hill, and uh, the late 90s, the Lord just opened his heart and his eyes to the needs of the unreached nations of the world. So Mars Hill then took a turn 
and devoted a lot of resources and its main focus into reaching, um, reaching the unreached. And so they produced a movie called The Hope, and it was designed a little bit differently than most movies were that either told the story of Jesus or told the story of the gospel. This was designed so that it could be tailor-made uh, where the language could be changed and aspects of culture could be changed in the movie so that it would be, um, in a word, incarnational for the viewers. So if you're a tribe in, uh, in West Africa and you're able to watch um, a, a, a version of this that has people speaking your dialect who look like you and the, the, the main storyteller looks like your uncle, that's a very, very powerful thing as they explain the gospel story. Um, so that's, that's what the ministry as a whole does. Um, we, are, we are primarily tool makers, and this is the one tool, and we custom fit it. Um, my job is the partnering director. So um, missionaries and mission agencies, um, they, they contact us primarily. They, they hear about the movie, they see it, and they say, wow, wouldn't that be great to be able to have that film in our language, in our culture? And I say, absolutely. Um, let's, let's pray about this and see what God's putting together here as far as a team. And it's not that we make it, but I come alongside pastorally and um, uh, project managerly. Um, I come alongside um, these teams in the context of, of, of the ministries. And I basically uh, uh, encourage them and, and walk them through the process of developing over a year, two years, maybe three years of, of producing a whole different film um, for their people in their language that has cultural, cultural aspects that people will recognize. So that's, that's what I do. I'll let you go for, from there, Mark. Fantastic. Fantastic. So... Um what makes you most excited about serving with them? How do you see God at work in what, what the Lord's doing with these, uh, the, the hope? Yeah, you know, um, it, it's easy when you're away from missions to kind of forget about the, the globe and the world of peoples. Um, and one of the exciting things for me personally is that I, I get to... Um, I get to work shoulder to shoulder with folks from all around the world, and I hear their, I hear what, and I see what God is doing in them, through them, in their contexts, um, and it's just, it is huge for me to be able to see that again. I, I remember being like in Bible college, and you know, you get introduced to, to missions, you know, you, go, you get missions conferences, or if you're in a church culture where there's, um, th there's an emphasis on missions, you, 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 get, you get a bit there. But um, this, is, this is just different when, you know, um, almost every day I'm, I'm in contact with, um, with agencies and, and missionaries from all over the world, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in India, whether it's down in Peru. Um, I mean, it's, so that's, that's exciting because I get to see, I get a glimpse. It's kind of like um, I, I get a seat on the second row uh, <laughs> Uh, to, to be able to see um, what, the, what the Lord is doing in nations. Um, and so that, that's pretty big for me. That's wonderful. So, Rob, how can we as a church be praying for you, your wife, your family, or Mars Hills? Yeah, so um, the, the, the big thing that I would say to be praying for, um, we are developing um, kind of spearheading um, software that will allow missionaries to be able to take their phone and um, basically separate from us, not needing me, not needing um, even our technical guy, Joe, um, to be able to walk through a process where they can either translate the Bible, they can translate the Jesus film, they can translate our movie, The Hope, um, into the language of their people. And um, it, it's unprecedented. Nobody's been able to pull it off before. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's Wycliffe, there's um, the Seed Company. These are, these are Bible translation ministries that have heard about um, what we're trying to accomplish here through this app. Um, we're running into some challenges because techno technologically it is a challenge. Um, 
to be able to put that kind of uh, power into something that doesn't, you know, take, take over the entire phone, to be able to have it efficient and effective, to be able to pull off that kind of a challenge. But if, um, a, as the Lord brings the pieces together, it is going to change the game in terms of translation ministry for um, the, unreached, uh, the unreached nations around the world. So I would just say, please pray for that because we're running into some challenges because it's, that's why no one's done it before because it's, it's like, wait, can, can this even be done? We've been assured by software developers, it, wow, that, that can be done. Um, we're not exactly sure how, but we're very confident that it can be. Mm. So pray for the app. It's called PG Studio. PG Studio. Just pray for that process and uh, that, that, that would be awesome. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for joining us this morning. For, thanks for taking time out of your day. It, it's a joy to, to see you, to hear from you, to hear your heart. And uh, can you stay on the line while we pray? Absolutely. Thanks so much for the invite to come and visit. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this calling that you've placed on all of us to be a part of sharing the good news. And it truly is good news. It changes lives hope and salvation. It brings peace. Uh, it brings um, uh, 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 an abundant life to us, a, a life full of life. And so, Lord, we want that for all, all peoples to have the opportunity to respond to that. Thank you for Rob um, and his ministry. Thank you for the, the, way, the, uh, the things that you've put on his heart to be concerned over. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would uplift and encourage him uh, as he uh, takes part in his ministry. And, Lord, I know that sometimes when we look at global missions that the needs are so great that it can start to weigh on our hearts. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would keep him uplifted. Uh, keep him looking forward, uh, just taking one step at a time, trusting you and, 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 and being a part of doing what they can uh, to help serve the world uh, church. And Lord, I just pray for this app. Uh, Lord, I just pray that it would get developed. I pray as, as we make all of these processes that much easier, that much easier to hear a story, that much easier to hear the gospel in, in people's own language, in their heart language, so that they can have the best opportunity to respond. Lord, I just pray that, that you would put this together, that you would bless software uh, people with the ideas and the know-how uh, to put this together, Lord. Lord, we lift up uh, Diane as, as she's traveling very soon. Uh, to be part of medical missions, uh, that you would make her, her, the training that she does there a blessing for all involved, that she'd be able to encourage and uplift them, that they would know that there's people who are concerned and praying for them. And Lord, I just pray for the ministries of cure that's uh, transforming lives through uh, doing uh, surgeries on children and, and just being able to introduce them to Christ. But Lord, we just want to lift up each and every one of us. Uh, Lord, help us to look in our hearts and examine how we're part of your great commission, how we're part of evangelism and missions and of communicating the gospel. Lord, we do it out of love for you. We do it out of love for others because we want them to know the good news that we know. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would constantly be strengthening us and encouraging us to be part of that work. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the opportunities you give us, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again so much for your partnership. Thank you. All right. God bless yeah. you. Let's thank him. We invite you to rise and worship with us.
I think these got put to the side, but some of the children uh, appreciated Kids Camp so much that they took the time to write every one of the helpers a little note. Uh, so if you didn't see these, you, you should see them and, um, and pick one up if you were helping with Kids Camp. Um, but that took them a lot of time. Um, we're going to take a moment here to uh, introduce you all to Lydia Jane Smith, who was born to Sarah and David on August 10th, just on August 10th, and born at 8 pounds, 9 ounces, 21.5 inches. So let's uh, welcome to our church Lydia Jane. <laughs> first day in church, right? True story. All right. It's, uh, every, it's everybody's first day at church at some point, right? Yeah. All right. Um, we went to a, a wedding several years ago for a cousin of Amy's, and uh, the, the, the couple who was heading off to missions, the couple was, um, being, the fishi- it was being officiated by her father, okay? And uh, he, 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 you know, loved his daughter and loved them, and he was very effusive, and he talked about, wow, what a beautiful couple. Isn't this a beautiful couple? And then he talked about, her, you know, my daughter's feet are so beautiful, and it's so beautiful. And he was, what he was doing, he was referencing in, in the Bible where it talks about beautiful feet, I believe. And he talked about it, and then, but then he was like, oh, no, I just talked about my wife's beautiful feet, but I didn't talk about her groom's beautiful feet. So then he thought, well, I got to go there, too. So then he's like, and his feet are beautiful. And we're all like, there's a collective, what, what? You know, there, aren't there beautiful feet? And we're like, okay, now you're trapped. You're too, you're too far in. Just get out. Just get out. You're talking about feet way too much. Oh, yeah, by the way, the uh, children's church can walk out. Ki- kindergarten through second grade. Kindergarten, I for- forgot. Kindergarten through second grade. But I, he was, I think he, what he was trying to do was, is, was to compliment them on the, that they had a heart for the gospel. Uh, beautiful feet. Uh, let's, if, if you have your Bible, you can uh, turn to it. There's a uh, pew Bible, so you can turn to it. It's in Romans 10. Romans 10. And I'm going to leave our series in Isaiah just for this week uh, because I knew I was going to have limited time and I wanted to, to give a message that was really in, in line with what we've been talking about this morning. Uh, and it's a favorite of mine. But in, in Romans 10, it says, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. So right there in verse 1, Paul says, I'm not going to... I'm going to tell you how I feel. I want people saved. And yes, he's talking about Israelites, but we know he also knows he's called to the Gentiles. He's just saying, I want to see people saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, and their zeal is not based on knowledge, since they do not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish it, establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Paul had already built the case that we need righteousness for a relationship with God. We need righteousness for a satisfying life. We need righteousness for eternal life. And he's saying, but that righteousness comes from faith in Jesus. It does not come from following the law. He's he's made that very clear. It does not come from you being perfect. Because guess what? None of us can make it as perfect. You see, that's not where that righteousness can come from. It comes as a gift from God. It comes from Christ. When we believe in Christ, he gives us righteousness. That's where that righteousness comes from. Uh, Moses describes in this way the the righteousness that is by law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your mouth, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. He's saying there's there's a word for us. A revealed word. It comes from the Lord. We're not making this up. We're not generating. We're not self-generating this. This has come to us. There's a word from the Lord that comes to us that says, you can be saved. To the Israelite, to the Gentile, to the peoples of the world, you can be saved. What it takes is believing in the resurrected Jesus as Lord and Savior. You can be saved You can have a relationship with God. You can have satisfying life. You can have eternal life. It comes from 
believing in the resurrected Jesus, that he truly is Lord. Verse 11, and the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. There it is. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Paul said at the very start, I want to see people saved. And the Lord, Paul says, the Lord wants this good news to be before all people everywhere so that they have the opportunity to call on the Lord for salvation. Let's get this news everywhere to all people so they at least have the opportunity to call on the Lord for salvation because everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. So if this is what we believe, it needs to become action, right? If this is what you believe, it becomes action. The question is, why has a, a Rob Watt devoted his life to missions? Why is there an organization raising money, spending time, spending money to produce the story of Jesus on film for all these languages? Why go to all that trouble? Why spend all that effort and money? Why did this enormous effort go into running kids camp for two hours a day? If you want to see how much effort it is, be there when we're moving inflatables. <laughs> Why do we go to that much effort, that much sweat, that much, oh, I'm exhausted. Why? Why, why did these people standing up here give up a week of their summer, a week that maybe they could have spent in air conditioning? Why did they give that to prepare Camp Meadowland so that they could do a summer of ministry? Right? Action becomes belief. Why, why is Diane traveling to West Africa in the middle of the summer? Why would you do that? Why did Amy and I take a week of sabbatical, go up to Spruce Lake Wilderness Camp, and sleep on that uncomfortable bed? It was a different bed. It's still uncomfortable. Why? 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 And I'm not trying to call out any, anyone in particular. I, there's lots of whys, right? Why? Let's go to verse 14. <clears throat> how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Let me jump down to 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Why? I'll tell you why. Because they can't call on God without belief. Why? Because they can't believe without hearing. Why? Because they can't hear unless someone what they say, what Paul said, preaching or telling them. Why? Because they can't preach unless they actually go and do it. It's never a theoretical. The only way to preach and tell the gospel is to do it. Why? Because faith comes from hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the why. Paul can't really make our mission as followers of Christ any clearer, can he? I feel like this is a super clear passage. We can talk about our purpose in, in all kinds of ways, right? As Christians, we're called to bring God, glory to God. We know that. We're called to bring glory to God. We're called to worship him. We're called to love him with all that we are. But exactly, and it's out of that love and your experience with God and that desire for worship that we want to share, hopefully, this relationship we have with God with others. So if, if you're seeking God and loving him and worshiping him and bringing him glory, then obviously out of that you would want to tell other people how they can have that same wonderful experience. And we can talk about purpose and, and, and mission. We're, yes, absolutely. The Bible says we're called to bring people help and healing, and we're called to help people break chains, and we're called to set people in prison by f sin free, and we're called to change people's lives for the better. Absolutely, that's all absolutely 100% true, but we need to be saved from ourselves, and we need to be saved from our past, and that starts by having access to the all-encompassing salvation that Christ offers. Yeah, we want to be holistic Christians, and that, that holistic approach to healing people comes from the power of the Spirit that we allow to bring, to bring into our lives. 
And yes, absolutely, we are called to bring truth to people, and we're called to alter wrong worldviews, and we're called to impact culture, and we're called to champion justice, and, and those things are all throughout Scripture. And also, we know that it's in personal salvation that there is that Spirit-given power to awaken these changes. Nothing works, works more powerfully. We can have some impacts on some of this stuff, but nothing more, works more powerfully than allowing people to have the Holy Spirit power come in and start changing the worldview and the, their sense of truth and their sense of justice. So our mission is straightforward. Give people the opportunity to respond to the Lordship of Jesus. Because it's a res- the response of faith impacts the whole person. A response of faith takes us out of darkness into light and life. Isn't that what we want to offer people? Light and life. The Bible uses terms, terminology we probably wouldn't use. It says that mission will allow you to have beautiful feet. Well, then that begs the question, beautiful feet to who? To whom? To who? One of those. Your feet become beautiful to those people that you're bringing that are waiting for Jesus. To those people, you have beautiful feet. To a Lord who's pleased with you living out your mission, you have beautiful feet. And you know what? For yourself, when you're living on mission, and I guarantee you this, when you're living on mission, you're going to say, I feel like I have beautiful feet. Because you're understanding you're giving people something, a gift, a precious gift. I want to tell you one quick story. And I'm watching, I'm watching time, but let me tell you. Up at Spruce Lake, let me tell you a story about a young man. I, I ran across this young man because I would, I would I'd pay attention when I'm walking through the crowd, and I would see him sitting over there often by himself. And I just took note of it. And then one time I saw him sitting off by himself, and I had challenged the kids at the beginning of the week, first lesson I gave him. I said, I'm going to be preaching on the armor of God. Please, my challenge is read the whole book of Ephesians. Set it in context. It doesn't take long. Just read the whole book. Anytime you have spare time, read the whole book. I guarantee you it will help you understand what we're talking about at the end of the book. And I saw this young man reading scripture, and I looked over his shoulder, and he was in Ephesians. And I said, do you mind me asking what you're doing? He looked at me a little indignant. He said, well, I'm reading Ephesians. I said, why? He says, because you told us to. I'm like, okay, okay. Awesome. I'm so glad you're doing that. I bet most people here aren't, but thank you for doing that. That's awesome. He's like, my ADD, it keeps hitting in. I get down through the whole page, and I realize I didn't understand a word I I read. It's kind of hard. I said, well, keep going with it. So on Wednesday night, they have what they call invitations. And at the end of the night, uh, I'm called upon to give a very, very clear explanation of the gospel and a very clear call to are you ready to accept that message of the gospel? Are you ready to say, yeah, I believe Jesus is Lord, Christ is Lord? And then the counselors all go up, and we sit on a basketball court just like that. And I go up, and they have lanterns because it's at night. And this young man made a, a rush to me. And he told me his story. And, and, and we're sitting there, and he told me his story, and we're sitting on blacktop, You know, not a great place to sit. We're sitting on blacktop, uh, sitting folded legs, looking at each other. And he tells me how through COVID, how he's felt depressed and lonely and isolated and hopeless, and he doesn't have any friends. And he said, and we asked questions, and we interacted a little bit. His his parents were believers, but he didn't believe any of it. Didn't believe any of it. He felt like they were kind of forcing him to go to church. He, He stopped going to church. He didn't want to have any part of it. But he said, you know what? I feel like I don't have any friends. And he said, I prayed to God. I said, God, could you give me friends? And he said, within a week or two, uh, uh, and I don't understand all this stuff, but they, they reached out through the computer. <laughs> and this, like, video reached out to them. Somebody he had contacted with, like, months ago. They finally reached out, and they said, hey, do you want to be part of our group? And they started communicating. And he saw that as God answering his prayer for just friends. And then he, he said, you know, and then somehow, I don't know exactly the background, but uh, a, a youth pastor and another young man 
uh, from another church reached out to him and said, hey, do you want to start hanging out? Do you want to start grabbing some coffee, doing some stuff? And he saw this. He, said, he was like, those guys are pretty cool. Those guys are, I like those guys. And then somebody said, hey, why don't you go up to Spruce Lake? And he's like, I don't want to go. It, it'll be a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun things to do there. You need to get out of the house. You're, 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 you're sick of being trapped in the house, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. So he went. And then he heard the word of the Lord, and he was challenged with the word of the Lord, and he read the word of the Lord on his own. And on that night, uh, he's, uh, he's sitting across from me t- telling me these things, and he's like, I just don't know still. I just don't know. And I said, let me reframe this. Don't you see God's trying to get your attention? He's answering your prayers. He's dropping people into your life that you feel uh, are significant to you. He brought you here to camp, and you're really wrestling with all these ideas. He's like... Does it feel, I said, does it feel like God's moving in your, in your life? Does, do you, does it feel like God's trying to get your attention? He's like, yeah, it really does. And we talked some more. And uh, <laughs> I, I can give you the details later. But basically, at one point I said to him, I was, I'm sitting there, this uh, boy from a Chinese background, and me, uh, uh, you know, very Caucasian. And I'm saying to him, I'm like, I think you're thinking a little too Western in your mindset. I think you need to be a little bit more Eastern. I know, it was really bizarre. Anyway, um, um, I said, is, is tonight the night? Are you, do you want to accept the Lord? He said, yeah, it is. So I said, can we express that in prayer? And he said, yes, let's do that. And uh, as I prayed, I was surprised. He reached out and he, he held my hand. He held my hand and we prayed for him to receive Christ. And uh, he, he kind of stood up. He said, I want to give you a hug. And he gave me a hug. And he, then he was off. And I, I might not ever see him again. But I leave him in the hands of a very big guy who's already got his hand all in his life. And the next, the next day, uh, I was talking to Josh Reichert, who's the program director. And I said, uh, I said let me tell you, I, I had the wonderful opportunity. And you know, when that moment comes... You know, this is, this is what it means. This is what being on mission is all about. I said, I, I, ha- I had the opportunity to pray with a young man who received Christ. And he said, who? And I told him. And he said, because that's the very student that he had told me about the first day I got there. He's like, yeah, I just got a call from a mom. Her kid still doesn't want to come. They're kind of twisting his arm, telling him to come. She's very concerned about him. H- again, his, his parents, you know, his parents are praying for him. His parents are believers. His parents are praying for him. And she had told him specifically, we're not sure if he's going to stay. He's so against coming. And we're praying for him, though. And I said, y-, he goes, that's the boy who got saved this week? I said, yeah, it is. So, y- you know, it's this whole thing of, of you know, He's got praying parents. He's got this, this, these young men that are pouring into him. They're watering. They're fertilizing. I was just there for the harvest. I was just a tiny little piece of it. But boy, oh boy, in that moment, there's few things as rewarding as that. When somebody's eternity changes, few things more rewarding than that. And even when you have to release them into the hands of God, it feels wonderful to have beautiful feet. Do you have beautiful feet? Do you have beautiful feet? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we talked a lot about the mission that you've given us to tell others about you, to let people know how through belief they can have righteousness that gains them relationship with you, that their lives can be changed in a moment by accepting a free gift. So, Lord... For each person here, I just pray that if if they've never accepted that free gift, that today, right now, right here, they would say, Lord, I want you uh, to know that I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe I'm a sinner, that I need salvation. I can't do it on my own. And Lord, I'm pleading for your righteousness. I want your salvation. I want to be washed clean as snow, white as snow. Lord, come into my life. I believe you to be Lord. I want you to be my Lord and Savior in my life. And for those people who have already made that choice, I just pray that we would continue to have a deep, deep desire to share that with others. And I I thank you for people that took time at Kids Camp, took time at 
at, on the mission trip to be part of that process, the people who do that full-time, the people who do that uh, just as in, in day-to-day life, the people who pray for others doing that, for all of it, Lord. I just, I just pray that in some way that we all have beautiful feet, that we all are giving other people the opportunity to hear this. And Lord, help us to think about how maybe, what do I need to change? What do I need to alter? How can I be part of this great mission that you've given to us in this world? Uh, help us to be honest with ourselves and help us to, 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 to change if we need to change. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to do all of that. And, Lord, we just thank you for the free gift of salvation. We thank you that you give it to us. And you, we thank you that you enable us to be a blessing to others because of that. Amen. Please rise and join us in singing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Amen.